When I got my hands on the RG35XX, I was simply elated. I was excited to kind of relive this nostalgic factor of having a vertical handheld similar to the Game Boy or the Game Boy Pocket. And I honestly was satisfied. There were a lot of things to love about this little handheld, but something that kept on happening in the comment section underneath that video was people talking about the MiU Mini Plus. When the original MiU Mini went on sale, it pretty much sold out instantaneously. And I didn't feel like paying scalpers an extra 20 to 30 or even 40 dollars just to get my hands on it in fact i just prayed and hoped that eventually it would come back in stock little did i know that apparently there was a screen shortage for the handheld itself so we never really got an opportunity to buy a miu mini so after loving everything about the anbernic rg35xx i decided to go ahead and take a stab at the miu mini plus see what all of the hubaloo was about the handheld and see whether or not it was worth it if you go to aliexpress and you go to miu's official page you're able to find the miu mini plus listed there for $66 with free shipping. And now there is an array of colors that are available. You have white, you have black, you also have gray, which is a little bit more retro and transparent purple, which kind of reminds me of Game Boys from back in the day. But when it comes down to it, most of the time, whenever stock comes in, it's quickly wiped out either by bots, resellers, third party websites, whatever it may be. So if you're looking online, there are a couple of websites that are out there that are worth recommending. If you're going to Amazon and you're buying it from a third party seller there, make sure that they support Prime just because it makes it a lot easier when returning the product in case there's any sort of like defects or the button stop working or the screen pops out or whatever it may be, just so that it is a lot easier for you. I'll be the first to tell you that when it comes to unboxing these handhelds, I don't really have too much expectations when it comes to the unboxing experience. It's not going to be like an NVIDIA GPU or an Xbox Series X where you're going to have this amazing presentation of the product that you've purchased. I'm kind of just expecting a box to open up and just kind of have the product there. But I was pleasantly surprised when it came to the Miu Mini and its sliding out aspect of the box. It just, I don't know, seems so much cooler than the Anbernic RG3 35xx in terms of presenting the product to the user now i'm not going to be doing a comparison of the miu mini plus to the ambernic rg35xx but i will be doing a separate video about that so you know what to do in order to stay up to date with all that other stuff but unboxing it was awesome i have heard that there were cases that were there for the miu mini when it originally came out and it didn't come in a box per se but regardless i think that this is awesome and overall just a really nice first impression in the box itself, you're going to get the MiU Mini Plus, a little bit of documentation. There's going to be a USB-C to USB-A cable, as well as a micro SD card reader. There also is a screen protector, and it also comes with a couple of wipes just to prep up the screen before applying the screen protector. Overall, though, it has everything that you need to start gaming because there is an SD card that is installed onto the handheld, and it has all sorts of games that are ready for you to go ahead and use and emulate on this handheld. In this handheld, you're going to have a dual core ARM Cortex A7 CPU, a PowerVR SGX 544MP GPU, there's 128 megabytes of DDR3 RAM, and technically the memory that is supported on this handheld is up to 128 gigabytes. Most units come with a 32 gigabyte card, but mine came with 128 gigabytes with a bunch of games already installed. The screen is a 640 by 480 IPS screen. The system that all of this runs on is Linux, and the battery inside of this is 3000 milliamp hours. And according to me, use the listing, you can get up to seven hours of battery life. With me playing it here and there, I've been able to squeeze out around five to six hours. I haven't been able to hit that seven hour mark, but I'm playing more of like the SNES and some PlayStation 1 titles on here. I'm assuming that if you play 8-bit titles versus 16-bit titles, you're able to get more battery life out of it. There's a vibrating motor function if you have a game that supports a vibration. And in this, there's a Wi-Fi card, which opens up the door to potentially having, I don't know, retro achievements or local multiplayer, whatever it may be. You could also update the OS by just connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Or I don't know if that's possible, but it would be really cool to have that 
happen or have the functionality be updated to take advantage of the Wi-Fi in that sense. So when I first got my hands on this unit, I was pleasantly surprised by its size. It just feels very comfortable in the hands. And at first I was kind of holding it like this. And then I quickly realized that holding it like this, almost kind of like, you know, when you hold a volleyball like this, it just feels so much more comfortable to hold it like this. And the ergonomics of the handheld itself feel really great as well. Even its thickest spot, it's 25.1 millimeters. That's not that big at all. And overall, even at its thinnest point, if we were going to go ahead and compare that as well, you know, you're looking at 15.5 millimeters. It's nothing that's too huge. And overall, this is something that you could easily slip into the pocket. You don't have to really worry too much about anything being uncomfortable or being caught. Uh, and this is something that honestly feels great in terms of pocketability. When you look at the unit itself, the first thing that stood out to me were the buttons itself. Now, I knew that coming into this that the D-pad for the Mew Mini Plus was just simply better than some of the other handhelds that are out there. The buttons, they feel really great to press down. There is a rubberized membrane that's inside and it just feels like a very clean push whenever you hit one of the face buttons. Start and select button are a little bit more clicky than I would like. It's uh, clickier than the original Game Boy in my opinion. The multi-function button or the menu button that's right in the middle is a quick click as well. On the left-hand side, instead of a dial, you're going to have a volume rocker and on the right hand side it's completely and totally bare on top you have an led that indicates whether or not it's charging whether or not the power is dying down and then you have the power button on the bottom side you have a slot for the micro sd card you have a 3.5 millimeter jack input as well as a USB C. on the back side i this is the thing that kind of excites me the most about this is the fact that you can actually take off the cover to change out the battery in case anything happens now it does take a little bit of energy to actually pop this open which i'm okay with i'm actually fine with that because that means that it's much more stable and secure but overall this is an awesome little handheld the back shoulder buttons feel very ergonomic in contrast to some of the other units that are out there but this is something that for long periods of time i can just see myself gaming on especially with a guy that has bigger hands you know i am used to the steam deck and going to this it just it feels really nice to be able to play something like this and not have my hands cramp up or feel uncomfortable after long sessions of playing retro games on this unit. When you boot up your MiU Mini Plus, you're going to be greeted with a MiU logo and eventually it'll boot into this OS. From here, you're going to see your recent games that you've played, your favorites. There's going to be a huge list of games. And if you go in here, it's all separated by generation or console that it's emulating. From there, you have your RetroArch option, which is a whole different layout that's there in order to see the games that are available. Then you have apps, which are essentially homebrew apps that are listed within this uh, application folder. And then from there, you have your settings, which lists your power off your brightness as well as your wi-fi and then the cool thing that i like about this is that there's actually a color option and when you go in here you can adjust the illumination the hue saturation and contrast obviously you know if you want to apply it you actually have to reboot everything in order to get it going then there's a uh, language keys bgm volume themes which i like which is basically going in and adjusting the theme and the colors and the music that's there i like it because you're going to essentially adjust it to your like your favorite themes that you do like there is a hibernate option so if for any instance you decided to just leave it on the counter or your table without ever actually shutting it off, it will go ahead and automatically turn off for you to save power. Then there is fixes, which is essentially just an audio fix. I'm assuming that this is just to kind of get things going and not have any issues with the emulation that's in place. Then there's a factory reset and device info that's there. All of it's pretty straightforward in terms of what it does and what's available to you on the user end in order to adjust things for the OS and the experience. One thing that I do like about this OS is that there's kind of like this layout that's there. It's kind of cool and unique, but I do know that it's not 100% accurate in terms of rendering the game or running the game as it should. I just like the little aesthetic that's there. So if you don't really care too much about perfect one-to-one -one emulation, you can essentially have this right out of the box. And it's just a little nice to have that's there. So uh, I like it. I think it's nice, but you know, not everyone's going to enjoy it not everyone's going to want this in terms of your gaming experience
So when you hit this function button that's here, you're going to have this menu that pops up and you're going to be able to pause the game no matter what's happening. And you can either continue, you can have multiple save states that are there for you to load up. Then you can obviously load them. There is a native menu that's there. So if you hit that, you're going to have the retro arc option that pops up and then it'll resume the game once you continue going from there. And there is also a net play option, which I think that's where the Wi-Fi is really going to come into play if you have games that support net play. And from there, you can exit the game and go back into the menu that's there. In terms of form factor, I love the MIUI Mini Plus. I think it's just much more pocketable than other handhelds that are out there. This is something that if you want to, you can just go ahead and take your MIUI Mini Plus, start playing either on the bus or waiting for transportation, whatever it may be, and you don't really have to worry about anything. It feels very similar to the Game Boy Pocket in terms of form factor and just that ease of use that's there. Despite the OS and the quirks and kinks that are within the base OS, it still feels like something that you don't really have to worry Worry too much about. This is a great entry point for somebody that's looking at getting into the world of emulation and more importantly, retro handheld emulation. When it comes to battery life, I haven't ran into too many instances where my battery is just running out in the middle of playing. But what I have ran into is that whenever I think it is shut down and that the battery consumption is zero, it's actually still consuming battery. Somehow there are instances where I put it to sleep instead of shutting it down. And then when I go back to actually continue playing or continue my game, gaming session, it's dead. And I have to go ahead and look for a wall charger or something to just plug in to keep things going. I do love the fact that there is Wi-Fi on this handheld. Now, I think that there's so much functionality that is left locked behind the possibilities of the Wi-Fi. I think once modders get into the usage of Wi-Fi on this and the net play that is available through RetroArch, you're going to be able to do all sorts of things and be able to play with all sorts of players out there in the world. Speaking of modders, I do like the fact that there is Onion OS and the ease of use that comes with Onion OS. It just feels like there's a lot of tweaks and fixes that were made by the modding community in order to get Onion OS up to where it is. Future Rudy here, I realized in the middle of installing Onion OS that it was going to take some time in order to actually get my ROMs from my hard drive onto that SD card where Onion OS and everything is housed in. And it did take some time. It took roughly around two, three hours to get everything that I wanted onto the handheld in order to actually test everything out. I'm here to say that despite how long it took for it to actually get run, Onion OS is actually really, really awesome. Now, the time that it took for it to start and running and all this and that has nothing to do with the OS itself, but more so with the amount of games that I wanted to get onto the SD card. That being said, there are a couple of things that I do want to go ahead and mention that I really do like about Onion OS in comparison to the stock OS that came on the MIUI Mini Plus. For starters, it cannot be overstated how easy it was to get Onion OS set up and running on the SD card. It's literally a drag and drop scenario. And once that's done, literally you boot it up, get everything installed and running. And then after that, you take out the SD card, put on some games on there, put it back into the MIUI Mini Plus, and that's it. You're done. You can go ahead and start gaming. I will have links in the description below to important pages in regards to their wiki and where the files are and whether or not if you're new, where to put everything in terms of like the BIOSes and the ROMs and so on and so forth. It's honestly a plethora of information and is something that I would recommend to anyone that is new or even someone that's semi experienced in terms of getting everything up and running for emulation. I will say that I absolutely adore the themes that come in the OS. It just adds a lot of, I don't know, quirkiness to the whole feel of the handheld. And it really kind of tickles that nostalgia retro feel that I personally am going for. Obviously, there's more modern themes that are there for people that just want something that's a little bit more modern. But for me, I love the retro aesthetic that is available to you. In terms of functionality, I think one of the biggest things that comes with the latest update to Onion OS is the fact that you can update with future updates over the air. So if you go into the settings of the system itself, you can go ahead and find a little toggle that lets you update the software via OTA updates. For me, this is a huge quality of life improvement because you don't really have to worry too much about taking out the SD card, plugging it in, downloading everything on the computer and getting everything set up and then taking that SD card and putting it back into the handheld and then update your software. Everything's done right on there as long as you're connected to your Wi-Fi. 
Wi-Fi network. I really do like the fact that, that you can essentially jump from one game to the other and it's relatively really seamless. You don't really have to worry too much about whether or not something is going to work or not. It's just pretty much honestly really awesome that you can just pause whatever it is that you're doing. If you want to go back to another game that you were playing or if you want to just try something else, you can just go ahead and do that, pause, move someplace else and start a new game and come back to it. This is very similar to some other handhelds that are out there or some other OSs that are out there. But for some reason with Onion OS, it just feels much more smoother, much quicker. And the overall experience is just really well polished, even now with the beta that I'm running on this. When I first got into emulation, one of the most daunting things was seeing the sheer amount of emulators that are available to you. You can literally emulate almost anything that has come out in the past, well, since the entirety of gaming. But when it comes down to it, I don't want to play every single emulator that's out there. With Onion OS, you can essentially on the back end pick and choose which emulators you can have showcase or show up and pop up in your game selection. It's much more convenient if you're not going to emulate literally everything that's possible and you just want to go ahead and focus on the games that you're really truly interested or the consoles and systems that you're interested in. With that you can toggle on and off different apps that are available to you on the back end including some of the simple things in life like setting an internal clock if you want to go ahead and play a game that has a day and night cycle like Pokemon. If you just want to go ahead and experience that you can. That's it for future Rudy now back to past Rudy. This is up there alongside with Garlic OS. I just love the fact that I'm able to get things and customize them to my own particular and specific needs and that things just run better with a couple of clicks and dragging and dropping of files. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. I personally believe that if the original MiU Mini came with a case that the MiU Mini Plus should also come with a case, especially if you're going to be taking it with you and traveling around. At least in my case, that's how I would see myself using it. I do wish that some form of protective case came with it. And I don't mind paying an extra 10, 15, 20 dollars just to get Get that on the side. If Miu had provided that as an add-on, I would have happily paid the money in order to get that. There are some instances where audio was just a little finicky, where things were just a little bit distorted when you hit higher points in the volume spectrum of this thing. But if you're playing with headphones like I do, you don't really have too much to worry about. It'll just be fine and you don't have to worry about any sort of distortion at all. One thing that I do see being a huge problem with this handheld is supply issues. Now, other manufacturers of retro Retro handheld emulators, they haven't really had too much of a problem in terms of getting the supplies that they need in order to make the handheld and provide them to meet demand. But when it comes to MiU, I don't know what it is, but there's always issues. Even right now, I looked on AliExpress, there's plenty of different models that are sold out and there's only some that are available. Obviously, like I said, you can get some from third party sellers or you can just go ahead and play the waiting game and wait for MiU to go ahead and release more MiU Mini Pluses out onto their storefront but I don't know it just it sucks that there isn't enough supply to meet the demand when it comes to this handheld I've never been a fan of having one SD card slot I think that having one SD card have your OS and everything that is tied to that run smoothly off of one piece of storage and then the next piece of storage actually having all of your games housed in there that way if you want to switch things out or just change things on a whim you don't have to worry about screwing something up with your OS obviously for the people that are very technical and very detail oriented, they won't mess that up. But for people that don't really know the ins and outs of all this stuff and just follow tutorials, I could see them accidentally messing stuff up. It's just the name of the game when it comes down to it. But regardless, if you're careful, you won't really have anything to worry about. So who is this for? In my opinion, this is for somebody that wants to go ahead and dip their toe into retro gaming. This is for somebody that just wants to buy something, have games that are already there that they either missed out on their childhood or want to go ahead and re-experience on the go and just have it with them. Obviously, there's plenty of options that are out there. For example, the Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch, or any of the other great handheld emulators or consoles that are available on the market but sometimes when you want to go ahead and game having something that's small and you know reminiscent of the Game Boy just it feels nice to have in your hands and be able to go ahead and play retro games on something like this. So guys let me know what you think about the MiU Mini Plus and whether or not you think this is worth it. If you have one let me know in the comments below I'd love to hear your experience on it and whether or not this was something that you would recommend to a friend. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that let me know I'll be down there in the comments and if you want to hear my review of the Ambernic RG35XX click this video over here and until next time guys I will see you on the next one.
Peace.